by the way, is this hydroxide going to be attacking from in front or from behind? Going back to the previous reaction. I think from the back. Yeah, from the back. Why can't it attack from in front? Because again, sterics. Again, this group here is blocking the front. So we would expect this to attack the bottom carbon and to attack from behind, both of those for sterics reasons. So is this oxygen going to end up on a wedge or a dash? A dash, and what, which, where will this oxygen end up? Sorry? It will remain on the wedge. Yeah, it will remain on the wedge. Hmm. I'll go ahead and draw that. That would give us this intermediate. And we know that then this oxygen would protonate from the water. So that would give us this product. screwed up. All right, how did I screw up? I screwed up because it doesn't matter where this attacks because this is the same atom as this. Mm. I shouldn't have used an oxygen because it doesn't matter whether this attacks above or below because this is an oxygen too. Mm -hmm. If you have two oxygens, it doesn't matter where things attack. Now let's go back and try again. All right. With two oxygens, it doesn't matter where you attack because you'll still get an oxygen on either side. Let's instead... Uh, Well, I should have drawn it like this then. Let's say we have this nucleophile. Let's say we have this nucleophile. Now this is the nucleophilic atom. Now do we expect this to attack the top atom or the bottom atom? The top carbon or the bo bottom carbon here? The bottom. What's wrong with attacking the top carbon? steric hindrance. There's too much steric hindrance at the top carbon. So instead the nucleophile is going to attack the bottom carbon. And is the nucleophile going to end up on a wedge or a dash? Dash. On a dash because this oxygen is blocking the front. So again, for steric hindrance reasons, the nucleophile will come in from behind. That will give us this intermediate. And now we can protonate this oxygen using this solvent as the protonator. The important factors here are the nucleophile attacked the less hindered carbon, the bottom carbon, because of steric hindrance reasons. It's not going to attack the top carbon because there's more steric hindrance there. And it's attacking from behind because the front side is, again, blocked based on steric hindrance. So the nucleophile ended up on the bottom less hindered carbon and it ended up attacking from behind on the dash, not on the wedge. Let's think about what the reaction is going to look like in this case. What's going to happen first here? 
protonation. We're going to start with protonation. That's right. We're going to protonate this oxygen. expect to happen now based on what we've already talked about. You'd have an attack of the, um, you know, the delta or the alpha carbon that's delta. We, attack, we expect, and this will be our nucleophile then. We expect to use this as the nucleophile. But who is it going to attack? The top carbon or the bottom carbon? Well, you might think the bottom carbon because of steric hindrance, but now there's another issue because we have this positive charge. And now it turns out that electronics is more important than sterics. So let's see what the importance is here. Now remember that this three-membered ring is very strained. Because this three-membered ring is very strained, it's actually constantly flipping back and forth between being a three-membered ring and not being a three-membered ring. Sometimes this is a three-membered ring, but sometimes We haven't talked about this before, but actually the three-membered ring is in equilibrium with two other forms that are not three-membered rings. Because the three-membered ring is so strained, it's actually constantly flipping back and forth between these forms. For example, sometimes this bond breaks and the OH is just on the bottom carbon. And sometimes the, top, uh, the, the bottom bond breaks and the OH is just on the top carbon. That way we get a little relief from all that ring strain. So actually, there's an equilibrium between these three forms. One form where we have a three-membered ring and then two forms that have carbocations. Well, these are the forms here that are going to determine which carbon is going to get attacked. We can see that it seems like reasonable to attack either the top or the bottom carbon because they both have forms with positive charges. But which of these forms is more stable? Which of these forms is more stable when the positive charge is on the top carbon? Why is that? because it's more substituted, because alkyl groups are electron uh, donating. That's right. We know that alkyl groups are electron donating, so substitution with alkyl groups stabilizes carbocations. That was one of the big lessons from when we were studying SN1. We know that more substituted carbocations are more stable. That means that in actuality, the molecule is going to spend most of its time looking like this, some of its time looking like this, and almost none of its time looking like this. This actually is going to form almost, it's almost never going to take this form, because why should it take this form when it can form a more stabilized form like this? So in actuality, this form is actually going to, uh, the molecule will almost never be in this form because this involves the less substituted carbocation. Instead, the molecule is really going to keep flipping back and forth between these forms. This form is somewhat better because everybody has a full octet. And this form is somewhat better because it doesn't have the ring strain. So it's going to keep constantly flipping back between the two of these. And it'll form this form to get rid of the ring strain, and then it'll flip back to here to get full octets. But it's almost never going to take this form because this form is the less substituted carbocation. Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, who is the nucleophile going to end up attacking? The top or the bottom carbon? Because that's the one with the positive charge. Since the molecule spends a lot of time in this form, there's a lot of the time where there's a positive charge on this carbon, which makes this a good electrophile. But we were just saying that there's almost never a case where the full positive charge is on the bottom carbon. We would say that this top carbon has more carbocation character. We would say that the top carbon has more carbocation character because it's better able to stabilize that carbocation character. So this is a case where we would attack the more substituted carbon because of the carbocation character. 
Now, generally speaking, you're never really going to draw these pictures to solve problems. This was just part of the explanation. When you're solving a problem, you'll just draw the three-membered ring. Okay. But you need to know in the back of your mind that the, top, the more substituted carbon has more carbocation character because substitution stabilizes carbocations. So nucleophiles are going to prefer to attack that more substituted carbon. I'm going to go ahead and erase these pictures now because, again, we wouldn't usually draw these for solving problems. But this was our explanation for why we're going to tend to have, uh, suppose that the top carbon has more carbocation character. So now we're going to have this group is going to attack over here. 